Yeah, about to be boarded. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Real Hazardous. Today we're going to show you what happens when you get stopped for a boat safety inspection by the FWC, so stay tuned. The FWC is the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, which is like the game warden basically. They do both uh, on land hunting stuff and fishing, you know, they, they, they cover all of it basically. Well. <laughs> All the requirements, at least for Florida and the Coast Guard, I will put in the description. So if you need to jump in and see what your boat requires, depending on the size or type of boat, you can go to the description now and, and take a look at that. When they pulled this over, they asked for the captain's license, which was mine, and the boat registration. So make sure you have that all handily available. Make sure you also, if you're fishing, you have your fishing licenses, because they're probably gonna check that as well. And depending on what you're fishing for, could require special stamps. Make sure you have all that. For example, there's saltwater anglers, but then if you're catching lobster, there'll be a lobster stamp. You know, so just just make sure you have the license for whatever that you're going for. Just like that. How are you guys? Who's Good. captain? Well, I'm the owner. He's the captain. Gotcha. All right, Roger that. Cool. Um, you're gonna see me filling out a piece of paper. It's not a ticket. It's just an inspection form. I fill it out for everybody. So don't freak out. Um, I need the paperwork for the boat as well as your ID as captain. And uh, we'll start off with boating safety stuff, and then move on to fisheries, and we'll call it a day. Any firearms on the boat? Uh, is your gun on there? Yeah, it's Mine in my is. bag. Where's your bag? In, in the, the console. Forward? Uh, right inside the console. Gotcha. On the, so only accessible through this side, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, in your bag, do you have any other necessary equipment, safety equipment, uh, your ID, that kind of stuff? No, yeah, my ID is in my pocket. Cool. So. Just don't do anything crazy with the gun. Cool? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're all in agreement? I agree. Yeah. Right. There, um, I think the uh, registration is up in the front there. Okay. Up here or in the front? Uh, I think it's the front. That's right. Okay. I'm going to let you in there. Just hold the... Yeah. I'll trust the guy with the library card. Yeah. <laughs> hey, YouTube. Today, we're about 17 miles offshore. You don't normally see them out there. I mean, it's not terribly uncommon, but I don't think I've ever been stopped that far offshore. <laughs> uh, seen them a couple times out there, but I haven't been stopped. Today, they checked us out. And here's a couple things you should expect when they pull you over. Also, some things that I didn't realize that I think you guys should be aware of. It's pretty important. There's probably small ones there, but the new ones should be in a maybe in the bag there, or the meters, meteors. Uh, Looks like they've seen better days, but the date's gonna be past year. 2019. All right, look at the uh, the, the meteors. This should be the update one. You have to have visual distress signals. In this case, I had an electronic flare which is something that is legal, um, that fulfills that requirement versus you know regular handheld flare. Make sure though that your electronic flare is both for day and nighttime use. Ours was, but I've heard of other electronic flares that only cover nighttime. Just to clarify, the electronic flare is for night, but in the package, there is a flag that counts as the daytime flare, so to speak, the you know attention distress device. So if you're gonna get this package, make sure that it comes with the flag so you can have that count for your daytime flare. If not, you'll need some other flare that counts for both day and night. Oh, that's right, there you go. You got it. Beautiful, <laughs> all right. So day and night, cool, we're good on it. Sweet. Um, yeah, you box that up. I saw, so you got two flow coats I saw. Do you have yes. a third life jacket for her? Yeah. Oh, they're all in there. Cool, Look, if I can just them, put my on one. Done. See, We're here. good. Okay. Uh, the Type 4 throwable, so you got a sea cushion or ring? I got cushion. Typical safety equipment that you need to have are life jackets for every person. In this case, I actually have my Mustang float coats on, which count as a personal flotation device. And uh, me and my dad both had one, so we had to show one for our third passenger, Kayla. And I had to show a throwable, you know, flotation device. 
Cool, we are good on, actually fire extinguisher. That's it, that's the only thing we lack. Fire extinguisher, then we're uh, golden. Extinguisher, they're under here, Dad. That's a good size tree. Yeah, we just don't have, what's that? They're under here. Um, I think it might be an oven. Oh yeah, there's one on each side. It's in the green. This thing's good from, what's 12 plus five? 17. 17. 2017, this thing died. Oh, okay. Even though it's still in the green, you can re-up it. Okay. Kit is good for 12 years from yeah, the day right manufacturer on the bottom. That one's probably the same. Yeah, I didn't know they had a five-year high. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 12 years. That's, that's a... Uh, Every manufacturer has a different listed date span. That might be the same one. So 2015 plus 12 years, 2025, yeah. 27. 27, yeah, yeah, you're right, yep, good. You need to have fire extinguishers on your boat. Now, depending on the size of your boat, depends on how many you have. For our size boat, we needed to have two, and they were type B fire extinguishers. They have to be USCG, uh, United States Coast Guard approved fire extinguishers. Here's something I didn't know. In about April of 2022, they changed the regulations with fire extinguishers that 12 years after the date of manufacture, those fire extinguishers expire. It's a new rule. I say new, about a year and a half ago, I'll put a link in the description about this rule, but I didn't realize it. Um, they pointed it out. One of our extinguishers was within that time frame, the other was not, so we gotta get that replaced. But uh, it's something new in, in the old days, you know, previously, if it was, you know, on the green, shown, shown full, it was good. But now you have to make sure that your fire extinguisher is within, you know, the required 12 year time frame. Uh, do you have a descending device on board? Yes. Cool. If we can take a look at that, if it's rigged up. Yeah. Another thing that I didn't expect them to ask for uh, was a descending device. That is also a requirement if you're going to be doing some bottom fishing is to have that descending device or a venting tool um, for florida i checked the regulations you can have either one they asked for a descending device which is kind of a new aspect um, that's required and i had one show it to them we're all good i also had a venting tool so i had both but uh make sure you have that if you're going to be doing some bottom fishing a little bit sportier than i thought it was going to be today yeah that's too So if you look on the MyFWC website and look at the rules and regulations for venting and descending, you're required to have a venting tool or a descending device. However, if you look at federal regulation, you are required to have a descending device. So you can't have just a venting tool if you're in federal waters. In Northeast Florida, uh, pretty much if you're going to be doing bottom fishing, you're going to be in federal waters, you're going to be outside that three mile range so make sure that you have a descending device right on awesome done all right young man we appreciate it absolutely we'll do that's the name of the game you need to have sound producing device like a whistle or an air horn but a whistle is very cheap and doesn't expire so i would suggest that and make sure you have the appropriate lights on your boat there's that. Uh, your sensor safety equipment checked out. I'm gonna give you one of those gold stars everybody's been talking about. Okay. There's a lot of misconceptions on what it does for you. Um, yeah. If you're just out cruising with the family, we don't have any other reason to stop you other than solely a boating safety inspection. Mm -hmm. We will pass you up if this thing is displayed correctly. There's instructions on the back on how to do that. But basically, it's on your port side next to your numbers. Mm -hmm. um, it does not preclude you from getting stopped and, and still going through the inspection. If there's any other reason to stop you, you can fish and do something you fall in the water. That kind of yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Nah, that's part of it. It's part of being out here. Now, when you get checked by the Coast Guard, or in our case, the FWC, you can get this safety inspection sticker that you can display on your boat so the cool thing about this is once you get checked and you know they inspect you you can put this on your boat and next time around they won't do a safety inspection on you at least it's good for a year and you can even call like the coast guard or someone and and say hey 
um, I'm getting ready to, you know, summer's coming up and get ready to get in fishing. Can you guys do a boat safety inspection? So they can come out to you. You don't have to get stopped. You could have them come out and, and check your boat just to make sure you're up to date. You got everything, that way you can fix it, which is a lot easier than getting stopped when you're fishing. So you can display this and they won't do a boat safety inspection on you for, you know, another, for the year, or however long it's good for. It looks like uh, end of the year. Now keep in mind, this is not a get out of jail free card. This does not mean that no law enforcement can ever stop you. If you're doing something illegal, they can still stop you and you know check you check you for you know whatever fish illegal stuff stuff like that with bottom fishing there's also regulations um, from south atlantic marine fisheries and federal regulations a uh, couple things you might want to keep in mind have a de-hooking device to release the fish also non-offset circle hooks are required at least in our area again i know uh regulations have gotten pretty crazy complex and it seems like you need uh, a lawyer to accompany you on every trip <laughs> to make sure you're doing the right thing but i'll put links in the description to make it as painless as possible the guys were very friendly they weren't trying to just find something to bust me with they were great guys and they're very helpful you can always reach out to my fwc and i'm sure all the states you know if you got questions is this okay is this okay go ahead and contact them, email them, message them, phone them, and that'll make things easier. Cool. Right. Real hazards, I'll look it up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, take, take care. Take care. Do you want us to pull the string or just hold? Oh, no, just hold. Yeah. Yeah. Fight that before. Yeah. 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 You might take turns, walk back and forth on dropping each other off. See you guys. Thanks again. It's been seven years since we've been like stopped and checked. It's like it's kind of funny. It's been I'm like oh, I guess that we always seem they always seem to go by us, and then today was our day. So it was cool. Keep all our safety gear and inspection, and uh, we got that sticker now, so that'll be good. And uh, go back to fishing, catch some fish. Hope this information has been helpful. If you guys have any questions about our experience, um, any other regulations to point out, any helpful advice, by all means comment and. Uh, link or in the description below don't forget to follow us on our other social media accounts and we'll see you next time on real hazardous